<laughs> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we will talk about another type of, uh, well, our first type of infinite series, which is called the geometric series. Now, the geometric series is written in the format of a r to the n minus 1, where a and r are both constant terms, okay? And essentially, they are raised to some power, all right? Now, to see if the geometric series converges or diverges, we use the geometric series test, which says that if the absolute value of this r term is less than 1, then our series converges, otherwise it diverges. In other words, what does the absolute value of r less than 1 actually mean? And so, write it right here. Absolute value of r less than 1 is the same thing as saying the negative 1 is less than r, which is less than 1, okay, when you take out the absolute values. Notice that 1 is not included in this interval. Okay, so if the r value lies over here, then your series converges. Otherwise, the series diverges. Now, in our introductory video for infinite series, we talked about how the series can be broken down into basically terms that we can add together. Now, those are called partial sums. But what happens is that when the series converges, if you add up all the partial terms, you'll essentially come out to a total sum of the series, okay? Now, if this series converges, then the sum of this series can be represented by this a term divided by 1 minus r. And keep in mind, a and r are both constant terms, all right? Now, let's, let's go into a couple of examples. Um, let's see, sigma, okay, uh, let's say sigma 2 to the n, okay, and keep in mind, although these are geometric series, we can still try to use the nth term test for divergence every once in a while. <coughs> now, our first example, sigma 2 to the n. Now, 2 to the n, let's see. We have an n term, we have something, we have a constant raised to some n power, okay, this constant is r. What happened to our a? Well, we can say a is simply 1. So we have 1 times 2 to the n. So we have a, we have r, and then we have an n term, okay? Now, does this series converge, <coughs> excuse me, does this series converge or does it diverge? Well, it looks like this would diverge because 2 is not a part of this interval. Therefore, this series diverges according to the geometric series test. Now, let's say that when we first saw this uh, series, we didn't realize it was a geometric series test. What test should be first on our mind? Act term test for divergence, okay? Now, to see how to use the act term test for divergence, please refer to our video regarding the act term test, okay? Now, so that's example one, and we conclude that this diverges, okay, because two is not part of this interval between negative one and one. Now let's go on to the next example. Our next example says two thirds to the n, well sigma, excuse me, two thirds to the n. Again, we have an r term raised to some power, so r raised to some power, and what is a? A can simply be one. That's not a problem at all. Okay. Now, <clears throat> is this series convergent or divergent? It, so, in other words, the first question that you should ask yourself for geometry is: Does my r lie between this interval? Two thirds does lie between that interval. Therefore, this is convergent by the geometric series test. Now, if we have a convergent geometric series, we can find the sum of the series. Okay, in other words, what, did, what does it all end up adding up to? Now, the, the sum would essentially be equal to a, which is 1, over 1 minus r, which is 2 thirds, okay? And what happens is that when you simplify this, well, actually, let's, let's try to simplify this. 1 over, let's see, 3 thirds minus 2 thirds. All I did was a common denominator, which is equal to 1 over... 3 minus 2, 1 thirds, which when you simplify, comes out to be equal to 3. Now this is the sum of this geometric series. Uh, these algebra steps, uh, if you are unsure about what we did here, 
uh, please uh, refer to our algebra videos, and we do go over how to find common denominators. All right. Now, the next series that, I, well, excuse me, the next example that I would like to go over is already right here. Well, actually, I'll just erase these. This is a little bit longer. Uh, well, before that, let's let's go with this one. Well, sigma one over two to the n. Question is, let's not, let's not worry about finding a sum for this one, but the question is, is this series convergent or is this divergent? Well, <clears throat> this does not look like that format. It does not look like some constant raised to some power. It actually looks like the n is in the denominator. However, the key to these series sometimes is rewriting them. In this case, we can simplify this down. Well, we can rewrite it as 1 over 2, the entire thing raised to the n power. Why can I do that? Well, because n gets distributed to everything inside using the rules of exponents. So we'll end up getting, uh, well, I'll just write it right here. I'm getting 1 to the n over 2 to the n. 1 to the n is essentially, or 1 to any power is always 1, regardless of whatever the power is. Okay, well, to, excuse me, to any finite power, uh, so one to, uh, any finite and real power, 1 to the n is 1. Um, <coughs> essentially, I just rewrote this. Now, when I rewrite it like this, what is my r term? Well, we can see that essentially we have this r term raised to some n power. <coughs> Therefore, we can <coughs> look at this interval and see is, is one half between negative one and one? And yes, it is. Therefore, this is convergent by the geometric series test. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go over two more examples. Not too tedious. Um, which one do I want to do first? Okay, let's do this one. Sigma. 3 over 2 to the n plus 2 over, let's see, what is this, uh, 3 to the n, okay? Now, the question for this one is, is this series convergent or divergent? And if it is convergent, then find the sum, okay? So I'll put it over here. So convergent, divergent, sum, Okay, and the only time you can find the sum is if the series is convergent. So let's go over this one. Now, using the <coughs> rules of how to use the summation, if you have the summation of two, uh, two separate terms, you can take their sum separately. Therefore, this can be re rewritten as rearranged as sigma 3 over 2 to the n plus sigma 2 over 3 to the n. All right? So, in other words, if you have, let's, I'm going to write it all to the left in green. If you have uh, a sub n plus b sub n, this can be written as sigma a sub n plus sigma b sub n. All right? So, <coughs> let's see. This doesn't look like an R raised to some power. Okay, so can we rewrite this? Well, yes, we can. Because this can be then rewritten into 3 times 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 times 1 over 3 to the n. All I did was I just separated the 2 out. Okay, If you multiply the 2 back in, essentially you get this. Again, multiply the 3 back in, you'll get this. All right. Now. This, okay, like the previous example that we did, can be then rewritten as 3 times 1 over 2 to the n, right? Because when the n gets, uh, goes into the 1, excuse me, when 1 gets raised to the n power, that's 1 to any power, simply 1, plus sigma 2 times <coughs> 1 over 3 entirety to the n power, all right? So this looks like our format. It looks like A, in this case, is 3. R is equal to 1 half. And we are raised to an n power. All right? Uh, same case for this one. 
the next question is, well, okay, so it, we have concluded that this is a geometric series because it does fulfill that format. But now is this series convergent or divergent? In other words, is one half between negative one and one? And is one third between negative one and one? And remember, these are our R terms, R, R. <coughs> well, yes, they are between negative one and one. Therefore, our test is fulfilled, and this is uh, an example of a convergent series. Now, if this is convergent, then we can find the sums using A over 1 minus R. A in this case is 3 over 1 minus a half, okay, because R is a half, plus, in this case, 2 over 1 minus a third, okay. Um, now, I will not get into simplification, <coughs> excuse me, the simplification and the arithmetic of this, but you're more than welcome to uh, try this out. So this is the sum to the geometric series. Now, <coughs> our next example, okay, will be a little bit more about rewriting these uh, this series and okay and now to, to just keep in mind that to do these your algebra has to be strong okay so if you're having some trouble with the algebra with your algebra skills let us know on our page and we'll make a video explaining some of, of the questions that you have okay in fact we have already started an algebra playlist on our YouTube channel that's youtube.com forward slash math guys uh, now this last example says Sigma 3 to the 2n times 15 to the minus n. Question is, is this convergent or is this divergent? Okay, it's not asking about the sum. If it's not asking for it, we don't have to give it. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's divergent automatically, but it's just not the question that I'm asking for it. That's all. Now, uh, this series doesn't look like anything that we've ever seen. Uh, we do have something raised to some power, but this is a negative power, and this is to the two times the power. So what, what can we do about this? We can, well, we, we can try to rewrite this. 3 to the 2n can be rewritten as 3 to the 2, okay, to the n power. Now, how did I know that automatically? Well, because the 2 goes with the 3, and then... When there's an exponent on the outside, what it does, what happens is that it gets multiplied to the exponents inside. Okay? And again, that's rules of exponents. Times, well, 15 to the minus n is sim well, minus, when you have a negative exponent, you can simply take the reciprocal of it. So 15 to the minus n can be re rewritten as 15 to the n. In other words, this looks like we can have 9 to the n times 1 over 15 to the n. Why can we do this? We'll refer back to our previous examples. Because 1 raised to any power is simply 1. So, what, what can we do here? Well, we can simply combine these, okay, multiply them through, which comes out to be 9 over 15 to the n sigma. Simplify. This becomes then into sigma 3 fifths to the n. We have r to the n, so r to the uh, n over here, which is geometric. Where is our a? Well, we can take a simply 1. All right. Is this series convergent or is this divergent? Well, 3 fifths is uh, less than 1, but it's greater than negative 1 also. In other words, it falls in this interval. Therefore, this is a convergent geometric series. All right, now this was our last example. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about what we did. Okay. So the first thing that we should always do, okay, and now I will write these steps down. Our first step for ge geometric, you know, if you are specified, identify if it's geometric. In other words, rewrite if necessary, okay? Number two, identify your A and R 
terms. Okay, one. Well, because what happens is that once you have identified the A and R terms, you can see if the R fits this uh, interval. And if it does fit into the interval, then the series converges. If it does not fit into the interval, then the series diverges. Okay? One last note, keep in mind that 1 and negative 1 are not included in this interval. There's not a less than or equal to sign or greater than or equal to sign. It's just simply less than or greater to. Therefore, 1 and negative 1 are not included in the interval. So that concludes this video about the geometric series. If you have any questions, please let us know.